Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello and welcome to the video for C++ with blueprints, getting general project settings. We're working on a project and we have some project settings in here. We might have things like our legal information, company name, version number, and we want to put some of these in our about. And we want to put our version number on the loading screen so people can know which version it is if they need technical support. Problem is, none of this information is exposed to blueprints. And we want most of it, if not all of it. So what can we do about it? Now we've already seen how we can expose a variable. So let's see how we would do it here on a more grander scale. So this is our project version. And description, name, ID, these are probably all great places to start when we're searching to find where this code is in the system. If we were to search for project version, for example, so you can search on the API documentation, or you could search in the engine code. In this case, I'm going to search in the API documentation. Here's project version, C++ API. Well, actually, it's kind of cool. Is if you go to all, you can see other people have had the same question, like how to get project settings values, and they can give you answers. In our API, we have project version, but that's part of our network. Network version doesn't help. General project settings, project version numbers. Okay, cool. We'll look at that one. And we look through here, we find other things. We find our description, licensing terms, privacy policy, project name, project version. This is probably the right thing. So how do we use it? Well, we need a general project settings object because that's what it is in here and it has all this data. And it looks like it's a general project settings class. Cool. References, module, engine settings. Do we have that? That's important to note. Well, let's find out. Yes, I have it, but you probably wouldn't because it's not a default. These are your defaults. This is not. I just simply add it to my list, and now we have access to engine settings. So if you don't add it, you'll get linker errors and then be confused because it doesn't work. So it's super annoying. Okay. So now that we've looked at the documentation, how can we use this? Well, how do other people use it? How do other people get access to these things like the project version? Does anything else access the project version? Well, let's look through our code. Here is Unreal Engine, and we'll look for project version. We'll see if anyone else uses it. So we have a couple things. Um, network version, we don't care about that one. Project version, string empty. Game and ini .get string general project settings. Okay, so this is getting a string from our ini files. Okay, that's an option. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, there's a oh no here's the header file so obviously it's gonna have it. Uh, do, do, do. Get string again. Okay, so those are options for getting the project version. Is there any other way of doing it? Is anyone else using our general game settings? If we didn't want to do it, maybe this is our only way of doing it. We don't know. So let's find our general project settings and see who else might be using it. And we'd want access to the U general project settings. Okay, um, get default general project settings and ask it for the Boolean start in VR. Uh, get default, okay, so you can make a general project settings variable using get default. Get default, oh, here's the OS major and minor ones. Get default, oh, project, project name, pro okay, these are pretty simple. Get default project name. So I bet your project version works like that. So we could grab this code right here and see if it works. So if we went into our code and we pasted this in, that's what we want to use. So do we need an input? No. Do we want to make this a callable function? Do we need to execute it once and then keep the variables or every single time we ask for it? Are we going to have a bunch of information? No. It's just the project version. We'll make it pure to start off with. We'll make it a per get project version for the name. And then we're simply going to return back the version using this version. You could always do static f string and not have an input. You're going to get the same result for what we're doing. Let's look at our code. Code should be pretty simple. It's what we copied here, except instead of project version, we did project name. And you can look, and when we do this, you can see we have access to all the things we expected, including project version. 
And since we want to return that in our version variable, we do version is equal to that. And that will give us back our project version when we run the git project version node. And so if we were to run our code here, and here's our git project version node, so git project version, and you notice it's under my helpers class. I could change that, of course, if I want, but we want just for a generic one. And we play this project version 1.1.1.8. Okay, eh, maybe it's 12 now. Why not? Run this again. Oh, there we go, 12. So we know it works. There's our git project version node. Great. What about everything else? We want other settings from here. So do we make a node for every single one or can we make a generic node? Quick answer, you cannot make a generic node. It does not want to let you, and there's a specific reason for that. We'll get to that in a second. The other one is, remember how we were looking at the project settings and the I and I, and we saw the other versions, the other way of getting the project version? Well, that works too. I commented out the code here, but basically this is saying, hey, config file that you're here, give me this value, or give me this key, I want the value out of that key, and then I want you to put it somewhere out of this file. We're actually going to cover this in the next video when we cover how to make config files and how we can edit them inside of the editor, where we make something completely brand new instead of just editing stuff. Either one of these return back the same value. We want, so we've already determined by doing git default general project settings, we can get access to the project version. So by doing git default project settings, what do we get back? If we mouse over, you can see it gives us back a constant uGeneral project settings. So that's what we get back. Can't we just return that? Well, no. No, we can't. We could do this, constant uGeneral project settings, project settings, and we could try returning this. And you could try returning this a bunch of different ways. But the biggest issue being this is a const, and you can't return back a const from a static function like this. It just won't work. You can try it. Maybe there's a way I don't know about, but I asked all the much more intelligent people in the C++ Discord chat, and this was the general consensus on how to do this. You basically need to make your own object to return, or in this case, a struct that's going to contain the values we want. So in this case, you can see here, I grab our project settings. So it's going to have all of our project settings. I make a new version of this, so it defaults to our default values and then i simply say hey the project version inside of our settings set it to the project version of the project this variable do the same thing this variable do the same thing now i only did these three for an example because i didn't want to do the rest now you may be asking what's f project settings well if we find the definition of this we find this giant monstrosity at the front of our header file it's a struct it's a u struct it's a blueprint type, so we can use it in blueprints, and it contains all of these properties that are blueprint read-only. Oh, that's kind of nice. That means we can actually use these variables in our blueprints. Now, you'll notice there's some words here, like distinguished and other words, and categories like publisher and legal. I didn't do any of this. I cheated. That's the whole point of this. How can we do this? How can we use C++ to our advantage as a blueprinter? We have our general project settings, and we have a file that defines our general project settings, which you can see right here. And at the top of it is all of these nice U properties that are contained within our general project settings. So we're just taking them, grabbing the ones we want, and setting them up as blueprint read only. So you notice like this is a company name, U property config, that means it's gonna write it out to the config file, edit anywhere, Category is publisher, and the name it's an F string called company name. All we're doing is taking that information, well, all of it, I copy pasted it all, and then you'll notice here it is blueprint read only, no config, returning the same thing. So all I did is remove the config flag from the your property and change them to blueprint read only instead of our edit anywhere, and now that structure is exposed to blueprints to use how we want it. And to see that, we go back to our project. And we have our git project settings node. When you run this one, it returns back a setting structure. So we can do that and break it apart. And look, we have all of our variables. Not all of them are filled in because, again, 
I got lazy and I didn't decide to return all the values. So if I asked for anything that wasn't in here, it's just going to return back the default values. That is something to note. I am not initializing this structure properly. I'm not initializing any of these to their default values in case they don't have a valid default. They should, like bools all have default values. Um, I don't know if strings, F strings have default values. Honestly, I don't. Uh, like I said, this is using C++ with blueprints. You don't have to know C++ to do this. You just need to know how to search and copy and paste and get at just the information you need. And you can see me doing it right here. So try it out. If it crashes, give them default values. If it doesn't crash, eh, you're probably good to go. Figure it out. But you can see I have access to all these things. And since it's a structure, I can be like, eh, you know what? I only need the company name. And we'll just go ahead and hide everything else. And there we go. Now I have the company name. Oh, or maybe I want something else. And you can uncheck and check pins. It's a structure. Do whatever you want with. The point of it being a callable node instead of a pure node is if we had multiple wires coming out of here. Every time a wire triggered, it reruns this function and re-gets a new value for version. Callable nodes basically cache everything that's inside of it for that time frame. So we run get project settings. It runs my nice little function. It makes this nice little struct. And anytime I need to pull something out of it, so, for example, we split it and we grab the name out of this one. And I don't know, maybe this one for some reason is this. It's only going to do one call to this node and all this information is going to be cached. So that's where the main difference between Blueprint Callable and Blueprint Pure comes in. And if you've ever used Blueprints, hey, it's the same thing. Obviously, we defined it in the code and we're using it. So that's it for this video. That is your Git project version and two ways we could have used it and how we found it. And then our Git project settings, a way around some of the limitations you may run into in C++ and just, you know, getting around them and doing what you want.